Hello guys, welcome to another Substance Designer tutorial and today I'll be showing you how to make this uh, cobblestone cliff looking material and this is gonna be a long one because the graph is really complicated but bear with me, it, it, it will be worth it and if you wanna download this to follow along with a sample or whatnot, feel free, there is a link down in the description anyways, let's start so, we first need to create these main shapes and these main shapes are created by having this uh, tile sampler and didn't uh, I dish that into a distance node with a really high value and directional warp a little, edge detect, a bit of a bevel so this is just getting the shapes pretty much and I do levels just to get some uh, correction values here and then I do flood fill and uh, then I do a lot of variation here with, uh, as you can see, float fill to gradient. Uh, and this gives us those, um, how it's called, that, that rocky shape, as you can see here. Like, gives us all these edges and whatnot. And I kind of sculpt the edges, as you can see here. You can leave it at three sides, you can have it four. It's up to you, but I like this one. And after that, I just made the uh, invert grayscale and histogram scan and non-uniform blur to get out the edges to be uh, a bit more uh, nicer and after that uh, what I did is ditch this into the blend node with a copy just simple copy and I made this whole thing pretty much the same <coughs> and blended it in together and uh, I made a little switch node here so you can choose whichever uh, whichever uh, one you like this is more kind of uh, more small rocks and whatnot but you can you can blend it with some other mode as well have fun around with it and uh, after that we start doing the edge breakup and I do auto levels just to bring the values up uh, a little bit more edge breakup nothing special here uh, a bit of texturing the rock with these uh, scratches so what I did here is clouds and cells, uh, do them into a slow blur and do a directional warp with invert grayscale, as you can see. And now we sort of have these scratches all over. It's a subtle one, but it, it, does, um, it does the job. After that, I do deep edges or basically, uh, basically popping out the shapes, as you can see here making the shapes kind of pop a little bit more and making these um, values completely black uh, after that I add the uh, scratches so these really nice and um, rough scratches basically scratches generator bevel it a little and do a blend with subtract on, with Berlin noise to not have it everywhere and then just blend it with subtract here and then we do those spots, those really small spots, and what I do here is just a dirt into the levels node and into the bevel to make it even more, um, to make uh, make it less, um, to to make it a bit more soft and to have uh, less um, spots here. After that, uh, we add a surface noise. And the surface noise is just something really simple for uh, albedo map afterwards. But yeah. Anyways, so this will be useful here for our um, for masking the edges for moss here. But I will get onto it later. Uh, basically, what we do now is we are adding the lichen. And what is a really good way of adding it is you pre-blur the spot where you want the lichen to be. So basically, you blur the map a lot, you blend it in together, and you do a opacity mask where the lichen will be. So in my case, it's this thing. And how you do this is basically um, a grunge map, uh, put it into a tile generator, blur it a little, and then do a grunge map 7, so... You kind of have it uh, not spread out everywhere, but rather it's on some places and on some places it isn't. And then we blur those uh, spaces. Let me find... Ah, here it is. Basically, 
just a small little blur and here we are actually adding the lichen with this with the mask as an opacity mask and uh, ground and we add it with a soft light and this makes the material uh, a lot better uh, it makes adding a lot lot better and here I just kind of lower the white values a bit so I can add more stuff because there will be a lot more stuff to add and the first thing I'm adding is the moss here uh, in between rocks and what I do here is uh, basically I take this mask here and I take it all the way here to the moss placement mask and I do dust, invert grayscale, levels and uh, grunge map and what I use it for is here and uh, it probably could have been something else here but uh, yeah let's let's stick let's, let's stick to the point here uh, let's make uh, let's see how we made um, the moss shape first of all before we head into the other moss stuff uh, basically it's pretty simple we just do a shape into a transform 2d and trapeze transform after that we just add a gradient to it and a directional warp with Berlin noise and uh, we put that in as the as the pattern input and we have this shape this is a torn and we invert it and make that a scale map input and make this a rotation map input and we do a vector map input as well and uh, mask map input and those maps allow us to have a shape like this basically uh, where it looks really really nice and these two are furthermore uh, plugged into the moss generator so here we have a normal moss so just moss uh, randomly scattered around and here we have the moss that is scattered around the edges as you can see and here the, that's where we use this um, this mask this uh, map as a mask map input after that i did a histogram scan uh, to kind of add uh, the opacity mask for moss which will which we will need later for albedo and um, here uh, so first we add this mo this uh, moss as i can see oh no okay okay uh, basically what we do here we did a height blend with uh, this mouse here and this is just a simple height blend to get it between uh, these cracks of rocks uh, after that i pre-blurred again the moss the places where moss will be as you can see like th this is the random moss this is the moss that will be scattered around the around the rocks and then i add the moss and that's uh, this moss here so this mask here and what I did here is uh, more height variation to the moss. It isn't that important, but it does give a little bit of a detailing here. So what I did is black and white spots, high pass grayscale, and then histogram range into slope, two slope blurs, and this one into another slope blur, and then blend them in together and a really interesting mask forms. And that sort of creates that height variation. And we, here we blend it in with the uh, add sub and this as the uh, this as the mask because this gets us um, this gets us the top of these edges as you can see, basically the the top of the rocks. So we don't we don't uh, overlap the we don't overlap much with this moss that it's uh, in between the cracks. Uh, so here we added the moss and what we do now we do a bit of a, a finer moss so this is just some uh, more detail a bit basically and we do black and white spots slow blur another slow blur and we get this very weird mask uh, we do levels a bit to to get it a bit darker and bring out the black values we blend them in together uh, actually yep 
uh, we blend them in and have have this mask here after that we do another slow blur slow blur and um, we blend them together and this is starting to look like some kind of fine moss here and we subtract, subtract the crevices here so we want only this to appear on the rocks not in the cracks so what we did here is shadows and invert grayscale from this one but we probably could have used this mask as well but uh, I think this one might have been better for what we are doing now and uh, as you can see we subtract it and we only have it on the rocks and we subtract the first moss so we subtract basically these two combined these two moss masks combined so we don't have any overlapping as you can see it removes all the moss that was on this and now we add a fine moss here and this is just a subtle detail here but it does add up and we have a mask that is basically just a histogram scan of this now we add pine needles and uh, pine needles are here and what you do for them is we do a gradient linear one into transform 2d to just kind of rotate it <clears throat> and we do a curve and with this curve we actually control the the pine needle how it how it uh, looks and this can be anything this can be optional like you don't have to do this but this this was just uh, for more detail addition uh, basically you have it here it's very hard to see but it's there and we do a histogram scan and a transform to bring it out to the middle and then mirror grayscale and transform to thin it out a bit and we do a non-uniform blur to make it a bit more soft we do a multi-directional warp grayscale to have it actually kind of move around a bit uh, we use directional noise and transformation 2d to blend it in and to have a little bit of detail on it and after that I just sort of rotated those randomly and got them to be like uh, these two needles and uh, put them into directional warps to get uh, uh, with, together with um, this uh, paraboloid yeah forgot the name uh, to get to get it a bit more natural looking and here I wrote it as well and here uh, we do shape splatter which is amazing it basically it's basically like getting a getting a tile sampler making everything and then adding it on top of the on top of the mask but this this just kind of makes the the thing easier so basically we just do pattern one and two here and the background, the background is our uh, mask here. And here you can see a subtle addition of these, these small little pine needles. After that, we do a pine needle mask, and um, basically this is flood fill to grayscale. Here, here it is, as you can see, all the needles. We will need that later for albedo and now we do another shape splatter but this is for clovers and let me show you how those are made don't worry this is not something um, this is not uh, something complicated so basically we get a simple disk and uh, a polygon we do a little bit of transformation 2d to get them down a bit and combine them blur a bit histogram scan and then transform another transform to rotate it and then mirror grayscale to get like heart shape non-uniform blur grayscale after that i blend it with gradient linear just to get a bit of um, gradient going on here after that i did cells with uh, edge detect and blur and we kind of get these uh, uh, we get these veins looking thing sort of uh, after that we just get a shape that is uh, scaled down on the X and non-uniform blur again and we just subtract it with a low value just to just to have it um, 
just to have s some kind of detail. Although this is this is really hard to see on the actual material, but it does matter. Uh, after that, we do a histogram scan to get the to get the mask. Maybe we should have done histogram from this, but uh, it's okay. This this one is okay as well. Uh, what we do for veins is I do a tile generator with uh, a Y amount of uh, a lot of Y amount and only one X. I do edge detect and get these sort of the interesting uh, lines. I do save transform to to get it uh, to rotate like this. I do mirror grayscale and this is starting to look like veins as you can see. I do blur and directional with Berlin noise. And it gets that um, let's get natural shape going. And basically, after that, we just plug it in and get those get those veins. And now it starts to look uh, nice, a bit more uh, a bit more natural. After that, I do a splatter circular, and we get the we get the clover feel for it now. And multi-directional warp to just. Uh, sort of uh, get it a bit to look uh, to look a bit more natural and after that I do a tile sampler and these are very similar to the ones we have that we had with moss and basically invert grayscale shape we put them in as a rotation map scale map vector map and mask map all of these so this is the only new addition we did a transform here just kind of scale it up and parallel noise and multi-directional warp grayscale and it gets this very interesting uh, mask after that we plug that all in and get um, get an inch get a really small like um, sample of the of the clovers and after that we do a uh, shape splatter again because we want to splatter this all over the rocks and mask random isn't actually random, it's coming up from this moss mask. So I added it on top, but you can use something else you want. I just wanted it to fall into the crevices again. <clears throat> uh, and after that, we we get out the clover mask, which is a uh, float filter grayscale here. And we get out the normal map, which we will be using throughout the material, as you will see. Uh, make sure this normal map is... Okay, This is, it is plugged into it. Um, we probably don't need it to be this uh, ramped up. We can make it a bit more... Um, a bit more flat. But it, you can test that. It's up to you. So let's start with the albedo. Uh, so what we do basically is aim at occlusion to get a bit of uh, more detail and blend it in together with some low values here. I add fractal sum and just to add some grain and um, whatnot. I do a gradient map and the gradient map I did, I just sampled off of a picture. Did a bit of an HSL to correct the color and did two HSLs here. Uh, two uh, variations here, one is levels and one is HSL. So what I did here is make a light and a dark variation. So I can blend them in for uh, for uh, color variation. And what I did here is get slope with, uh, let me just find it. And it's here, all the way here I use this mask. And I will use it a lot throughout the... I, I mean, I will use it for get slope and uh, a lot of other stuff. But we use the blend here with the uh, this, this mask here. And do a histogram scan. And as you can see, it gets all those kind of edges and uh, natural shapes going. After that, I blend it in. And you can see how the light just goes all over and goes completely naturally. Uh, what I did is here is just uh, levels to make it a bit bright and some color variation addition and to break up the black colors we need a bit of um, white ones 
So what I did here is just a grunge map with a directional warp with ambient occlusion that was sampled off of uh, this mask here. Uh, we could have used this one, but I just find it more convenient to use this. And that adds a bit of color. After that, I used uh, this color to get a bit of dirt mask here. And the dirt mask is basically derived from this normal here. And what we need for dirt is just ambient occlusion, curvature and normal. And we can create these really nice uh, looking uh, masks. So I recommend using this node, it's, it's really useful. Uh, after that we just blended in that as an opacity mask. And you can see it's starting to get that feel of a, of a rocky... Um, how it's called... Uh, of a rocky color. Um, after that, we are adding uh, lichen, and what we're doing here is I'm doing an HSL from this original one, and just changing the hue. So we have a green and sort of a yellow one, and we blend them in together with the dirt mask. And I added it in, and as you can see, this is the lichen, and we just added, we just used the lichen mask we made earlier, and I just that ditched it into levels to control the values a bit better. After that, you will see some repeating patterns, of course. This is uh, coloring the moss and all the other stuff. So basically, we used the moss mask we made before. Uh, and getting a gradient map, ditching it into HSL to get a little bit of variation, making a bit of variation with the grunge map and then blending it in with uh, the original mask and the opacity mask is of course the moss and as you can see here it's it's not that nice on the albedo map but um, after it is nice on the actual material now we do finer moss uh, basically just an hsl and we do we use the finer moss um, mask for it that we also made earlier uh, pine needles, pine needles, I just sampled like a really really rough uh, thing. Uh, I sampled a pine needle but uh, way too much here a bit maybe. Uh, but basically that adds a bit of color to it and a bit of randomness and I, I, I ended up liking the result so I just left it with this. After that I did the clovers color which is again HSL to get a bit more uh, light green feel for it and add the clovers as you can see they really are kind of hard to see but added them with the clovers mask and then dirt uh, dirt I'm not actually sure what we oh I used the dirt here yeah okay dirt and the uniform color just just a tiny bit oh plug this in wrongly um, just a tiny bit Use it to get a bit uh, darker, um, a bit of a darker mask. And then we do what I always do is the mask, uh, sorry, the, the curvature nodes that make this look so much better, as you can see. Look how it looks here and how it makes it pop out here. But basically what I do is get uh, from the normal map, I get the curvature smooth and it's on OpenGL. Uh, on default it's on DirectX but uh, get it on OpenGL. Uh, I do a gradient map just so I can convert it into color. And just blend, in, blend it in with the uh, add sub. I do the same just with curvature sobble here. And also blend it with the uh, add sub and you can uh, choose the values here. If it's too, 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 um, too grainy for you you can buy... You can lower it if it's if it's way if it's really not that grainy. You can get it higher, but like it's up to you. It it looks it looks nice on materials and whatnot, but you need to you need to be careful with this. Definitely, it, you can overdo it. So I had the point thirteen or point fifteen, and basically that is our albedo map done. And after that, I'm doing the roughness map. 
So roughness is just a grayscale conversion into levels and into the get slope from that uh, mask all over there that we used for the other get slope as well. And it gets us this for starters. After that, we start removing stuff. Uh, we start removing lichen, we start removing moss, uh, finer moss, and this is all uniform color and the masks we made. Pine needles, uh, actually we're not removing them, rather adding them. Uh, so they can be, uh, so they can be uh, rough, because I like the, I like that, uh, I like that when they are rough and not, uh, not sort of uh, a bit shiny here. Uh, anyways, after that we even remove the clovers here, uh, with a bit of a greyish color. Like you can you can test around with this, but um, it's it's really up to you how you want the material to feel. And after that, we plug that into the roughness map finally. And for the height and the other maps, it's just what we made here. This shape splatter, and it's just uh, a height map, an ambient occlusion map. Maybe you can maybe lower the depth a little bit if you wanted to. It's it's up to you. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that is it. Uh, make sure to check it out on the on my link down below. And thanks for watching. Leave a like if you liked the video. And have a wonderful day. See you.